to your prayers and support. And we have to move. We have to obey. The Lord will take care of us, I believe. We just have to be faithful and obey. I will give more time to Dr. Lisa, but I want to say this. The challenge that we have now is not only this building. Thank you so much for all of you who made this building possible. By the way, Pastor Kadalik's picture is not here. He's a very humble person. His picture should have been here also who made things happen. That's the kind of person he is. And I believe that's the kind of humility that the Lord will bless. But the challenge for us now is not only the building, only the inauguration, but how to operate this school, not only to make it financially feasible, but more importantly, how to make it mission-focused. Last year, Elder Wilson was in this pulpit, and he reminded us, he said, you people there in AUP are living on top of the hill. Remember, God called you for the cities. We should go down there where the, where the multitudes are, where the needy and the poor and the oppressed and the sick who might be very rich but still sick and hurting so that we can bring them healing in Jesus, with Jesus' method. The challenge for us is how to make this school a missionary school. In the next few years, how to recruit enough faculty so that more and more of our faculty will be not only be Adventists, but Adventists who are committed to the medical ministry. Let's pray for that. Dr. Lisa, let me give you the time. Many years ago when I was a college student in England, I was a working student. I would go to Sweden to work in one of our hospitals. I didn't speak Swedish, so I was put in the housekeeping staff. I have cleaned more toilets than this whole room together has ever cleaned toilets. When I would get done with the patient rooms, I would do, get, be given various other kinds of tasks to do, things that only happened infrequently. One day after I finished, the, the host more, the, the matron of the hospital, took me to the, the hospital wing and uh, she told me to get a bucket of water and a little ladder, so I did that. This was a long hospital wing. It went all the way down, and it just ended in a little pinprick of light at the end. And she told me that my job that day was to wash the walls of the hospital all the way down. And when I got down to the pinprick of light, I was to turn around and come back and wash the walls on the other side. I had the water, and you know when you're washing walls, when you start getting up like that with the sponge, the water goes down here into your arms, and then pretty soon it's all the way down on your side. And I thought, oh, it's going to take me all afternoon to get down there, turn around, and come back. And I settled down the job, and she then turned on her heels and said to me, oh, when you get done with that, there's another hall downstairs just like this. If we knew everything that had to be done to make this successful, we would have not had the courage to go forward. We've been talking about how it's been 30 or 35 years that we have been doing it, but it's been 30 or 35 years at least that the Lord has been working out the circumstances and putting in place the people so that this could be realized. I think I first heard about this project from you, Dr. Witzel. You had sent an email when I was vice president at Loma Linda University detailing some of the history about Mindanao and some of the other things and the obstacles. And I hope now when history is written, this chapter will be not how the General Conference said no, but how the General Conference said yes, go forward even. <laughs> even when there was some discouragement and some obstacles. And I'm so glad that this afternoon, in detailing and listing the obstacles, the General Conference was not listed as one of those obstacles. <laughs> Dr. Rhoda had her, her experience, but I agree, Beth, we need more medical schools because time is short. We need more. And in this last quinquennium, we have opened, this is our third new medical school in a span of five years, and one more is underway. So we need more because time is short, and medical missionary work is going to be that closing work. 
we, we, we need to have more. But this one is especially dear to me because I had the privilege, as Dr. Rajagukuk said, of being on this campus in, in 1978. I was here with, with Abe and, and the other pioneers. And I say to you medical students, what a privilege is yours to be the pioneer class. There are going to be challenges. It is going to be difficult. There are going to be some mistakes. But if the Lord should tarry 30 years or 35 years out, you may be standing at a podium like this sharing how the Lord has led. See, Dr. Witzel wants to say something. Before you say that, okay, okay, hold on, Dr. Witzel. So I want to repeat. He said 35 years ago he came here and met with Dr. Rhoda to speak uh, and plan for a medical school. But it was 35 years before that that Dr. Richley had dreamed and started the work for a medical school. So he had started a blood bank in Manila and taught others about the Adventist philosophy and approach. One of the things that, so 70 years ago, the Lord has been working out his purposes at least 70 years. What I have been impressed with this afternoon is how each of us has had the privilege of having a little part of this work. And the Lord has positioned us to be able to further this dream and develop this dream. You had a role in it, Dr. Makaya, you had a role in it. Dr. Lau, I, my dad was also in Hawaii, so I got US citizenship because my dad was born in Hawaii. Actually, my grandmother was born in Hawaii, went there to work in the plantations, and that gave me the opportunity of going back to Hawaii, uh, University of Hawaii, where I worked in the School of Medicine. I was working there at the School of Medicine, then the University of Illinois College of Medicine, assistant dean for eight years. But the blessings and the experiences that each one of us had, and I salute you alumni, you have not kept the blessings to yourself. The Lord gives us these blessings. He gave me a US citizenship. He gave you a US citizenship through your mother, in my case, and my grandmother. And those blessings of God are there to share. They are there to share and to build up this work. So today is a celebration that we have had a part in this great work. And thank you, alumni, for not forgetting your alma mater, for not taking those blessings and just using them for yourself, but, but bringing them back to the Lord, like the, the, the one leper that came back and said, I, I want to thank you, I want to thank you. And that's what this is today, a celebration, great things he has done. We have seen that great things he has done, we can rest assured that he will continue to do great things as we move forward in faith. So let us be faithful. Glory be to God. Great things he has done. Amen. No. God is honored despite our hesitations. When I came here in 2011 and I had heard about the plans for medical school and by then I was now director of education having been through various roles. When I heard from Dr. Goyoba, we have somebody that we think could be a founding dean because we said one absolute necessity is you must have a full-time founding dean. And he told me we have somebody that's a founding dean. She's at another medical school She's a new Adventist, and I wanted to see this person because you hear all kinds of things. So she came up. When I heard the story that you just heard this afternoon, I knew without a shadow of doubt that the Lord was leading. And that's when I said that you have come for such a time as this.
I, I, I saw that the, the way was open, and I praise God that you accepted that, that challenge, and I thank each one of you for what you have done to further this dream. God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, we are so blessed with the messages, with the testimonies tomorrow. We are going to, uh, again, uh, have uh, a half-day program. We'll start the program at 8 o'clock, and uh, hopefully uh, there will be two programs okay, combined. We have the inauguration program and the uh, white coat ceremony for our inaugural class. And we are so happy with uh, all our alumni leaders. We have uh, from the West now, we have from ISNAC, Dr. Sal Corquines, who will also be uh, having his uh, felicitations tomorrow. Uh, and uh, our, uh, all of you who are here. Okay, so we praise God uh, and for our church, which are conference uh, leaders. So shall we all stand and sing that song, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow? Because indeed, uh, blessings come from Him. Eternal God, we have seen your wonderful works to this institution. You have used people in order for the realisa realization of the things that you want us to do. May you continually bless these people so that they will continually give their best for you so that your name be glorified. May you continue also to bless AUP so that it will continue to shine on all throughout the world and that we can glorify you and be prepared for your second coming. Thank you so much, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name. Thank you and uh, see you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Okay, 8 o'clock, we'll be uh, having our uh, inauguration service here.